it comes to students and challenges, it's, it's, it's a really big one, especially in this era. And so it's quite a sensitive issue because you really cannot compromise on education. However, before we went on a break, we said that these are not ordinary times. But I want to specifically go to each school and ask specifically what their request is what your request is. I'm going to go to Zaki. Zaki, what is your request? It's not, I've been here talking to them saying that it's not enough saying that we don't have access to data because then I want to equate it to students being required to be in the classroom. If you have to walk, you have to walk. If you have to take a car, you have to take a car. But I was countered by saying that, well, persons have also paid for residentials and then now they're not using the premises. Should the monies be, you know, refunded so that it can have access to data? But we don't want to, you know, go to the specifics. We're still on the generalities. So, Zaki, what is your requirement specifically? Because you don't have to write exams, right? Yeah. What's your request exactly? Our request is that, one, students be given some time to understand and adopt that I agree to the because system. even for the physical um, when you have to go for, before you start classes orientation before yeah. you start to school there's orientation they have to tell you where you have to go for your class where the library is and all of that and so if there's migration then we agree that you need time for orientation and even you well. realize that during lectures the very first day is not the day the lecture chaotic. starts yeah yes. he, he tries to make people comfortable with him, yeah. he cracks jokes, he shares yeah. the course outline. And then the first day is like short. I agree. Uh -huh. So students should be given that time to go through How the system. How much time do you want? Not, not so much of a time. I want specifics. How much time do you want? How much do you think you need to be able to be ready to fully prepare for the e-learning? Because then this is here. I think, I think taking students a month mm. to go through this is, is not going to be a problem. Okay, would, would, it, would, it, would, it, would it worry your academic calendar? Would it be a worry? Because then you know that's a shadow. We also don't want you people to cheat us, because some of us did four years, perfect. Semester, semester, <laughs> semester. We don't want, because of COVID, you are getting your degree by some skirmishes. Oh, but um, I, 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 if, I don't think this is going to be the first time in Ghana where maybe somebody will have to do five years instead of four years. Absolutely. Because right. in um, those who were supposed to graduate in 1995 mm -hmm. could not graduate in 1995. They graduated in 1996. So would you be okay if you ask for time and then it comes back to bite you later that we have to extend your semester at a point when the COVID-19 is But if is we over? are all on the same page that we are not in normal times, I think we should all be able to make those adjustments and sacrifices. Would you be ready when uh, uh, material is overloaded? You see... With the well, don't with forget, don't forget, we have a curriculum. That's with the understanding the of our system, mm. we are not going to write quizzes. You are not going to write exams. Okay. You are going to be given the materials mm. to go through. Mm. So if you have prop, if you read the material and mm. you have a challenge, okay. then you can contact your lecturer okay. through the system. So you are requesting at least a month. Yes, at least okay. a month. Isaac, yeah. so you were on what SRC, you know, is trying to at least UPSA, uh, you know, is give some is giving some relief packages. Uh, what exactly would UG want to do? Because I like us to establish the fact that uh, we're here. It's not that we are rehearsing for the COVID-19. We're here already. And it's all hands on deck. Okay. So students, since the birth of Adam and the removal of his rib, have had challenges with school fees. Have had challenges if there's a new problem, if there's a new, if there's a change, students would always, you know. So what are you doing? What can you do to help? I think um, there is an SRC Bibua scholarship that actually helps students who are needy. Okay. And there are myriads of scholarship that the school actually also has that provides support or mm. financial support to students who are in need. Mm. And um, within these times, uh, the deadline for registration has actually elapsed. Um, it was we pleaded for an extension okay. for students to make payments, even though there are quite a few students who are still who haven't been still able to, you know, um, make uh, payments in terms of their fees, whose issues are also being duly looked at. For instance, for University of Ghana, mm. uh, we've been able to engage with management to say that students who have issues of fees should be allowed to be signed on to the online system. Okay. Now, you being signed on to the online system would mean that you would have access True. to the learning materials and um, was the assignments and all that. Oh, but Isaac, so let me get a little, I need a little clarification here. If you're not able to pay your fees, it's not just a matter of you being able to register. You also do not have access to the e-learning portal. I mean, it's part of, yes. Okay. So it's it's okay. sort of a certification for you to move on to the next stage of having access to True, right. this. Right, okay. Yeah, so what we, what our engagement with them, um, um, 
also permitted that um, these students would have access to you know, these online resources. But even with that, there are still challenges. What's that? Uh, you know, students were asked to um, write mails, um, send mails to, what's it called, pro, um, faculty and college heads to actually, for them to be signed on or rolled on into the Sakai system. Some of them have sent mails, but they are yet to be responded to and all that. So these are some of the challenges even in there. Now, what we are saying, as I earlier mentioned, is about the minority who are also of significant importance to, I mean, they are part of our SRC. I agree. So we are looking at a way where a special provision should be made. And then this emphasis have, has always been made. For University of Ghana, um, the reason why we haven't been able to, you know, come out so much is that management hasn't come out with a holistic model okay. from assessment to uh, mode of teaching because the, to, uh, the trial... Um, period took place two weeks ago. Okay. It ended just on Monday, and then I think I heard there was a meeting. Why the delay? Why? No, they, 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 it ended on Monday. They were supposed to come out with a directive. Okay. We, as I said, SRC submitted a report to them. Mm -hmm. I heard of a meeting that happened yesterday, which they are, of course, here to communicate to students. So as an SRC, of course, we are duly, you know, waiting for these models to be put across, because, of course, you can't fight um, um, a, a demon you do not know. So exactly. Face it. Yes. So we would want to see the rollout as to how they would want to implement it after we have made our submissions to them. Mm -hmm. After which, whatever the decision would be from the student body will take place from there. But as it stands now, of course, these are the challenges. The challenges facing students are hardware, um, internet access, mm -hmm. um, what's it called? Ch uh, challenges of network instability. Okay. Um, challenges of, you know, what's it called? The online platforms uh, being it's jumped up being jumped, okay. uh, students having restrictions in terms of, so for instance, on Zoom, mm -hmm. it could have a limit of about, uh, the limit could be 300, some of the classes. We have some extended classes, okay. but a class could have a population of around 450. So as such, there, there, are, there are 150 people who have significance. I yeah. mean, there's a significant percentage of the class who wouldn't have access to the, 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 the online learning portal. Okay. So maybe we'd have to come back to you later after your module has been released so that we can fine tune what exactly will be your challenges because I can see that your challenge is a whole tall <laughs> and we'd have to fine tune it. But I'm going to open the phone lines for you, maybe students from UPSA, UCC and uh, Legon, you, you probably want to call and talk to your leaders here. Maybe they forgot something they didn't touch on. Call us on 0246-807983. 0246-807983. Now, um, uh, on student loans, right, yes. this has been something that existed even before COVID-19. And I, I know that has helped lots of students. And if, you know, it's properly done this time around, so it would also uh, give students some relief. What's the status for that? Uh, all right, MFA, um, before we were asked to come home on the 16th of March, mm. um, some students called me, some beneficiaries of a student loan, called me that they've received their, their monies and they will top up to register. Um, but then, um, I think f few few years ago, some also called that um, they are waiting on student loan, but mm -hmm. student loan still hasn't disbursed their their funds to them. And I called the office. Mm -hmm. What I was told um, was that uh, because of the lockdown, they are not working. So they will, they will come back after the lockdown to do the rest of the disbursements. Let me be uh, honest here. Yeah. Are you able to measure persons who genuinely need help? Are you able, as leaders, uh, able to measure students who genuinely need help? School fees and all of that? Emeva, Emeva, someone will call you and I know, like, I know, sorry, I know. Jeff Foley had a friend who used his school fees to buy a shoe. Emeva, someone will call you like, <laughs> and be like... Uh, okay, we have a caller. Right. Give me a, hello, Michael from UCC. Yeah, hello. Hi, good morning, Michael. Yeah, good morning. Okay, so talk to us, please. Um, please. I want you to ask Zaki a question. Okay. Zaki, um, yours, um, yours. Um, yours. Please. Mm -hmm. um, please. Um, the question is: um, Some students can't get their default password from their institutional email. Come again, please. Um, some students can't get their default password. Default okay. password. Yes. To okay. Their, their email okay. Okay. All right. And finding challenges, and me myself, I'm the victim of that challenge because I went to my portal and then was 
only my institutional email that was there. Okay. My default password wasn't there. For me to reset the institutional email to use to register for the e-learning platform. Okay. All right. Thank you, Michael. So, uh, Zaki will take that question for you, okay? You can also call us quickly on 246 So, I was on. How are you able to measure students who genuinely cannot pay their fees? So, um, Considering the fact that resources are really hard to come by. Yeah, so we, we get requests almost every now and then. These people, of course, have access. Actually, I'm sorry, can you answer the, that question okay. first? Okay. Yeah, the default yeah. passwords, yeah. yeah. Um, I, I'm sure with this question, you would now agree with me that there are certain challenges that need to be cleared. Absolutely. Because this e-learning for UCC schools is scheduled to start on the 22nd. And 22nd of yes. April. Yes, of this month. And if today is um, 17th and mm. someone still can't access his institutional password, I don't think that then we are actually ready. We've, we've, we've actually cleared all the challenges. Because me personally, as SRC president, I've told my students that we are halting with every process that has to do with this e-learning thing until all challenges Anything. are cleared. And I would like to use this opportunity, this medium, to tell all my students that I have not gone onto the platform. Hmm. I have not. So I have not I even. I have another caller from UCC. Hello. Hello. Hi, Samuel. Good morning. Good morning. Um, uh, my question directly goes to uh, my health office president, Zaki. Okay. Yeah, like, I, I would like to ask you, uh, what are the measures the SRC are putting in place can for us to get access to meet the editor or something so we can use that one to access our online platform? And since um, the management has not considered um, some of the petitions that they are writing um, to the students, so what are some of the things that um, the SRC are putting in place for us? To, Thank you um, so well, much. By, Okay, thank you so much, Samuel. Keep watching, and your SRC president will answer it. So, uh, it seems, do you have challenges in requests that you're putting to management? Uh, how how well is the response? Well, we'll be giving some indication that well, we'll go back and then address those issues. But now, that is why we we are of the view that if we are going to go back to uh, to have all those issues addressed, mm. then let's hold on with the whole process. process. Let us clear and make sure that we understand each other, we are on the same page, and then we can someone start. Is, someone has bypassed the government and asking you as SRC president, what are you doing? Or what are you going to do about data? Question that I've been asking that as leaders, what can you do? What are some of the innovative and creative ideas you can come up to be able to help persons should in case government is overwhelmed or management is overwhelmed? Okay, as SRC, we have resolved on our path that whatever um, arrangement or whatever financial commitment we are going to make mm. to help university management mm. um, provide data to students. SRC is ready to do it because maybe I don't know what the financial standing is. I can't give actual figures okay. here right now, but I know there should be something in the coffers of the SRC from SRC dues and from monies that we gather as SRC mm. revenue. We are ready to commit that to, to support university management to pro, pro, uh, procure data for students to be able to go online because for um, you, you, uh, Legon and then KNUST, they were able to charge their the five percent increment that came on the fees for the 2016-2017 academic year. Oh, so they've got some money in their coffers. Um, I don't know, but mm. I'm just saying that they were he's able. Here, but here, we were not able to. We were not able to to charge. To charge Why? Yet. Because <laughs> that one is another matter. Okay. I would not like to go to, but we have in charge yet. So I think that maybe they were pushing their bits in that direction. So I don't, I, I'm also of the view that SRC should support, and that is what we are going to do. It we means SRC would have to script. Yes, script. We, we will so, do that. Um, do you have a similar challenge as uh, Legon as to somebody, it's not that you cannot even register, but you, some people do not even have access to the e-learning at all because registration is your, uh, you know, is what you need to be able to access the e-learning. So these are two challenges. Do you have the same problem? Well, or you I, can... Oh, but you can have, because I know that if it wasn't for the virtual learning or e-learning, you can still be going to lectures until it's about time for exams, and then the list of persons who haven't paid will, will come up and all of that. Sometimes you can write exams, but you cannot graduate, you can't have, you know. So this one is a simultaneous challenge where somebody does not, is not able to register, and at the same time, the person cannot have access to e-learning. So it means that this person, is being denied if it was a lecture hall. It means the person is being prevented from going to lectures. And is that a history that if you do, if you owe fees, you cannot go into the classroom? Is that it? 
Is that a history in all schools? Um, so uh, with our platform, when you've not registered, when you've not paid your fees and not registered, you can um, sign up as a guest. Okay. Yeah, and still access the platform. Or you just ask someone who is on the platform mm. to send the slides, because it's just slides on the platform. So that Sending you the slides so that you learn. And then um, the interesting thing is that uh, management is saying that yesterday the VC said that, mm. okay, uh, he will allow everyone who has registered mm -hmm. to write their exams, even on WhatsApp. So I mean, WhatsApp and email, lecturers will send the exams questions to you, mm -hmm. either on WhatsApp or through your email, you assess them. So students are complaining that the, the platform gets jammed and all. The VC is saying that that's an alternative. Mm -hmm. Your questions can be sent to you through WhatsApp or through your email, and then you can get access to them, solve them, and then take screenshots of their answers and then send through WhatsApp to the lecturers. This too. brings me to a very interesting um, uh, question. Now, um, Isaac, so apart from persons not having access to data or poor networks in remote areas, some, some people do not even have phones that can connect to the internet, so they have what we popularly call YAM. Now, with the COVID-19, you know, people can download, but there's arrangements where you can call a short code or you can dial a short code so that it's not that you need a phone that needs internet. Have you considered that as well? Well, when you look at having access to uh, what's it called, lecture slides and all that, you can't mm. simply use a YAM phone to even, I mean, it would be of great disservice to such a person. Okay. So such an alternative would um, be a zero-sum um, mm -hmm. sort of initiative. Yeah. But um, speaking to the, the, the challenges as well, I think even here I feel to make a very important comment that is um, something that should be said and said on any other day. You see, um, in all the students with special needs, are people who also make a significant portion of our population. You know, in our petition to management, we actually stated um, what they should do for students with special, uh, special needs. Of course, they give assurances, which uh, we as an SSD also feel that whatever they put across there, that is the model that they come out to would, in, would be inclusive. Mm -hmm. That is students who are deaf, mm -hmm. people who are dumb, people mm -hmm. who have visual impairments, because mm -hmm. these people also pay their SRC dues to the SRC. Also, some students who um, are being even asked to um, defer, which was quite unfortunate if they are not able to assess mm -hmm. the system, which we as an SRC have actually spoke against on several um, uh, um, platforms where okay. we've been given these chances. So um, what we are doing now, or what we are looking now, as I said, from my earlier statements, you would realize that I'm looking at the way where those who be disadvantaged are catered for. Okay. Because in all we do, we should make sure that those who are not able to reach the very last end are catered for. Yeah. They are, if they have to be drawn to the finish line, they have to be drawn. If they have to be pushed to get to the finish line, they need to. But whatever we have to do, we do not have to leave anybody behind. Because right. they also make part of the significant population that pushes all to do what this we have to do. This is a general question, too. And any of you can take the answer. Though e-learning is a good one. I mean, even before COVID-19, we should have you know, considered e-learning. Uh, would you say that in this particular time, e-learning will be a failure? Yes, I, 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 I strongly believe. Generally? Yes, yes. Because you? you realize that right now, all Ghanaian students are on the same page. Mm -hmm. I say this, maybe yes, some may have different views, but I say this because even the National Union of Ghana Students, yes, which okay. is NUCS, mm -hmm. is also on the same path with students that the, the whole process should be halted, halted for all the challenges to be looked at and then some of the issues addressed. Just like I, I made clear earlier, that we can't have a perfect system which is 100%, but mm -hmm. we can at least solve maybe 70, not even... Not even, all of it, yes, but at, at, uh -huh, at least 70% of the problems should be solved. But you, Pierce, you've made some impressive you know, progress. Um, quite impressive, but then... Mm. Uh, there are still issues we need to um, look at to make it. So would you would you best. rather would you rather halt it or buy a lot more time or you know shall we just scrap this whole e-learning and wait hopefully that COVID ends soon? Yeah. MFA, uh, it will interest you to know that when I say halt, mm. I'm I'm gone. 
I mean, I'm dead after the issue. Okay. When I say continue, I'm dead after the issue. <laughs> who, so who, let's, be, let's, who, let's, be say, who will be killing you? <laughs> in fact, people called me and they were like, see, if you don't allow us to graduate this year, it will kill you. So see? there's a, there's a, there's a there's portion that wants to continue school regardless, and there are people who are generally constrained. Yeah. Yeah. So, so in fact, let's look at the best way for everyone. The middle ground. Okay. Yes, yeah. so that everyone can get like onto the platform. Do you think you're making progress with management? Do you think that management would nearly heed to your call? Well, well, and if management doesn't, what will be the higher call? Well, for University of Ghana, as I said, we have um, explored all legal means necessary okay. by writing. Uh, I can count about four different petitions we've written to management so far. Okay. Um, the fact of which we haven't taken a more radical stance to this is that, of course, for you to fight, as I said, a demon, you need to know the type of demon or monster you are fighting. Okay. They haven't released the holistic model as of now. You've made your your inputs known to them. Whether they would include it or not, mm. you would have to make sure they come up with the fine details of it. You critically examine it, whatever the shortfalls are. If those edges could be straightened, mm. then fine, you, you work it out to straighten. But if they can't, of course then, um, if it would disadvantage your students, it is just um, God's calling that you fight for your students. Okay, so I, I, sadly I have to go, you know, final yeah. words, yeah? Exactly. Um, some students said they did get the number. Oh calling. Lord! Okay, maybe it's I have calling. to. Uh, maybe I have to request for a part two, two of <laughs> this <laughs> one. Yeah, because then we are also calling for extension. Yeah. Yeah. So we we'll, we'll request for a part two, and then we'll put them now. Or maybe tell them to pull all of yeah. their concerns, and as yeah. from next week, we can continue with the uh, conversation. But uh, from uh, yesterday, we continued with a. Shall I take your last word? Yes. Quickly. Yes, I would like to say something quickly. Um, I know the students from University of Cape Coast are listening. Okay. And I would like to tell them that the SRC has taken a decision that we should halt or hold on for now until issues are, are resolved. Okay. And then we are able to make progress. I'll urge them that we are telling them that they shouldn't register. Yeah. If they themselves go on to do that, mm -hmm. it will be difficult for us to, to push cut, yeah. that agenda or that course to get issues resolved, which at the end of the day will come back to hunt us. That means we've been our own enemies. Right. So we need to stay together. I would like to assure them that myself, Zaki Abdul Hamid, who has an index number, who has paid full school fees, hasn't registered yet. Manifesto. So Thank <laughs> you very much. You've won already, so. <laughs> Hi. Uh, very funny. You. But yes. MFA, uh, yeah. mine is very simple. Um, mm. There's uh, a plea to management that they are doing well. Okay. We acknowledge what they are doing. Okay. But our problem is a minimal number hasn't paid and can't get access to um, the portal. Yeah. SRC is doing its best to help some students get onto the platform to write the exams, to write the offline exams. Okay. Yeah. So what we are asking of them is to just allow the, the, the little number to register. To register. And all UPSC for once. Okay. Maybe if, if the second time. Okay. okay. Um, I would say that for University of Ghana SRC, mm. we are still poised um, to ensure that as and when, of course, we are expecting that management releases the final model very soon. Okay. When it comes out, whatever we deem it necessary to mm. do, that no student is disadvantaged, will be done for the entirety of students to actually duly benefit from it. Okay, it's a pleasure so having yeah. you. Last year, I've realized that at the end of the show, I realize you also now understand our issues very well. So I want you to also join our course. <laughs> when we have people like you also joining our course. I wouldn't have a choice. We'll, we'll, we'll match to them, don't worry. Yes. It's uh -huh. rather a pleasure having all of you, but not on a good note today. Um, Albert Enum, he's the External Affairs President for UPSA. I'm going to be asking you where your SRC president is, first of all. And then I've got Isaac Ajiman. He's the SRC president for University of Ghana. He's in the suit. And then I've got Zaki Abdul Hamid. He's also the XRC president for UCC, duly represented in the middle here. I'm going to just uh, jump over you and go to um, Albert. Albert, so I read in the news some time ago that your SRC president had squandered uh, an amount nearly over 50,000, you know. What, what's the update with that? All right, so it, it, isn't that he has spent over 50,000, mm. but then he has spent 50,000 and then he has not duly accounted for okay. for those expenses, yeah. Okay. So that is the, the issue, but not that he has spent 50,000. Okay, so yeah. he, he's suspended as an SLC president or he's suspended as a student? Not as a student, but an SLC president. Yeah. Okay. But so he has been reinstated, yeah. He sent the matter to court. And he won the keys and then he has been reinstated. Oh, that's good so to know. So he's still our president. Oh, that's good to yeah. know. Anyway, so welcome to my studio. Thank you. So we want to establish the fact that we're not in ordinary times. 
it's not like the government just woke up one day and thought that, oh, he thinks you people should just migrate to e-learning. Everybody is adjusting. People are working from home. People, their frontline workers, everybody. We are not in ordinary times. And so it's not that we are too excited about the challenges. We want to just go over some of the challenges with the e-learning. And I will even go to the... Um, um, disadvantages, uh, advantages as well. First, let's go over. Every school differs. So I'm going to go to uh, Legon first. What are some of the disadvantages, really? Okay. Um, I'll start to say that I think innovation is a matter of invention. Okay. So, of course, in various points in time, we have to be innovative. But in our quest to be innovative, I think we have to also be very tactful in um, taking up any initiative that we wish to put out there. Now, why do I say this? Um, the e-learning, of course, is a brilliant idea. Nobody is I'm saying it's not. But in these times of implementation, I think due cognizance must be taken into in terms of people who um, are within the minority and people who are also within the majority class. That okay. is, um, issues of access is one that is paramount that has come up uh, within these times. Now, um, people have of the view that even in normal times, there are areas where um, network connectivity is very problematic. Okay. And as such, people within these domains find it de very difficult to actually connect to um, the various networks that they are on. Um, subsequently, people who live in remote areas have close to even uh, no internet access, access. at all. Some okay. of them even have to climb trees to even make calls. Amazing. Is this, uh, is this running through? Is this challenge, uh, you know, what I find this challenge also at UCC? Yeah. Connectivity, people in remote areas. What I also Jeez. find this. But let me just be the devil's advocate here. Okay, so the challenge is to everything like you mentioned. Before the e-learning, students would have to commute to school. People would have to go via, you know, cars and your car can break down. Either way, so you have to find yourself in the classroom, do you understand? Yeah. So uh, if we wanted to ask for even data, do you think that the persons or people who are in remote areas are of the majority or the, or the other minority? Let me go to uh, the UCC president. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, the, there are so many challenges, okay, mm -hmm. that have been mentioned by the various institutions. So the issue of data coming in is more or less like a way of meeting the students halfway. Okay. So, for example, we've been, we've been able to give everybody data, some amount of data. So now you have the data. Mm -hmm. You don't have the access. Mm -hmm. So from there, we can then move on to look at the other challenges. But I don't think that we should be in a position as to say, okay, we've just left it that way without also meeting the students. So that the students will know at least some effort has been made by providing you the data. So if maybe you would have to move to a place where you could access mm. internet and then go onto this platform. It's, it's, it's a good thing, at least. Okay, because um, you don't have a system that is perfect or as, as something that is 100%. I agree. Uh -huh. Albert, so what's the challenge here? The fact that people do not have access to the internet or the fact that I've read that you have to take your exams online. Is it the exams that you're taking online or is the fact that you do not have you know, access to the internet? All right, MFA, um, thank you very much. First of all, I'd like to... Um, Greet your, your cherished viewers, um, students of the University of Professional Studies, SRC, and the management of UPSC. And also, um, I want to wish the Deputy Women's Commissioner a happy birthday, Nancy Deborah. Oh. All right, it was a popular request to her to do that. Happy birthday, Nancy. <laughs> All right, sure. But um, we've bypassed the state of e learning. Right. We are now um, challenging um, the e exams. Okay. But it looks like. Um, students are not really getting what the e-exam actually is. Um, so most, some students have not paid their fees. Um, so they are not registered students. When you've not paid your fees for the semester, you're not a registered student. Mm. So if you've not paid your fees, you can't get access to the um, portal and the right to the exams. That is that's one of the issues. Um, some students are saying the, the platform for writing the exams is not mobile friendly. So if you don't have laptops or computers at home, you can't get access to the platform and do your exams. Okay. But what management is also saying is that um, we've been able to do the online learning. Um, next 10 days, we'll be done with lectures on the online platform. And then we now tackle the issue of the e-exams. What management is saying is that um, we are not writing a real-time real exams, I mean real online exams, okay. where you'd have to log on to a platform, you'd have to sit down, questions will come, you answer it, and you send. I think with that, there you're will be not, some complication. You're not yeah. doing that. What management is saying that? Mm. 
We are going to give you a take-home assignment. Okay. So we upload the assignment on the platform. Mm -hmm. You go online. Mm -hmm. You download the webs the, the exams. Mm -hmm. You have um, 48 hours to solve. Mm -hmm. Either type and send it to management. I mean, either type and send it to send it back to the platform, or you write and then you scan. And then you send it to the platform, 48 okay. hours okay. to do that. That is for UPSC as okay. it stands now. Before yeah. I I'll let you continue, is this the same for uh, UG and UCC as well? Okay. Take home assignments okay. representing exams. Okay. Um, to come in here, for UG, there hasn't been a release of the model as of yet. Um, because what as model I'm, is this? For uh, exam or? For the holistic e-learning. Okay. Yes. Um, they started a trial period for two weeks to assess the impact on students. Okay. And then after which the SRC wrote, a well detailed report to management as to um, the various challenges students faced and then our recommendation as well. Um, but to speak to the matter, as I said, I was. Yeah, when, when points, you, yes. So. Um, so when you look at the issue of access and issue of hardware access and all that, you know, there is nothing like a perfect system. Okay. We duly understand. But what about the people who be disadvantaged? What provision is being made from them? You see, that is what we as an SRC are positioning as a stance now. Mm -hmm. Now, if duly you want to roll out a system, there, are, there is um, a significant minority who, of course, make up the population that elected us as leaders. Okay. What is being done for them? That is why when government is putting up a building, even though there are quite a few people who are disabled, but still provisions are made for these people. Okay. So which means there is a need to make provision for this minority. What is that? What is uh, what need or provision can be made for them? That is where the discussion should be as it stands now. Because what fine, there are people who would, who would have access. There are people who wouldn't. Mm -hmm. So these are two different people. As an SRC, we can't say we would um, totally look at the view of the minority without also considering some of the majority as well. Okay. So we would have to find the middle ground to all these issues. What would be the middle ground? What provision can we make? for the people who are within the minority class. Is it that we will make a special provision where they come, mm -hmm. they take up um, the, the class, and then they, they, they are awarded the marks they are duly deserved? Mm -hmm. Or we look at a time where we can all have equal access and then we proceed. So these are some of the things that the lookout should actually be so that everybody is duly, because they also paid fees okay. and they also paid exactly. dues so as well. Exactly, so Isaac, I'm gonna come to you, Zaki, but Isaac, staying right there, is this not a rhetorical question where management of institutions would have to give a holistic approach? They cannot custom make you know, uh, solutions for students. So as SRC, persons might have paid fees, some of them might have not paid. But I know that there's SRC fees, there's, there's some dues and all of that. What can you do? We're here now. We're faced with the challenge. Education must still go on. Government has outdone itself. Okay, they're trying their best. So what can the SRC do? You think about it. So I'm going to go to, I'll come back. I'm going to, uh, Zaki. Zaki, so your institution as well, are you, are they replacing physical exams with assignments? Are they, are you taking assignments home just as UPS is doing or your approach is different? Yes, our approach is a Okay, bit what's your different. approach? Ours is that it's just going to be students having access to course materials okay. and then being able to go through them when they have problems, they are able to engage their lecturers. And okay. then we are hoping that as soon as possible, mm. COVID-19 will leave us and then we come back to school and means I've found to write the exam. Okay, so you're not uh, you're not forced to write no. exams no. or anything, no. but UPSA, yours is in the form of an assignment, so one way or the other. But are you sure they're going to grade or score you for exams? Yes, of course. Um, so Emma, let me come to this. Uh, as it stands now, um, about 11,000, 290, I'm not sure about the figure, but about 11,290 mm. have paid their fees. Okay. And about um, a little over 3,000 haven't paid. So okay. when you're looking at percentages, you're looking at, um, let's say, 79% against 21. Okay. That have not paid. Uh -huh. And then with this 21, we have some students who are in the lockdown areas who can't pay, go out and pay their fees so that they get registered onto the system. What do you mean by go out and pay their fees? I mean, they cannot go, assess the bank? The banks. Fine. Yeah. Some are also um, having top-ups of 200 CDs, 300 CDs, 100 CDs mm -hmm. to top up their fees and then get registered. So what SRC has done is to disperse an, a, a, almost over, a little over 40,000 mm -hmm. as a relief fund for these students who can't afford, I mean, those students who can't add the 50s, the 100s, and the 150s so that they get registered. 
So 40,000 for the 3,000 students who... No, not the 3,000 students. But I mean, some have some. not paid at all. Okay. And then so some you're just paid... trying to help people to be able to register. Register. So that we can reduce the 21% mm -hmm. that are not registered. Okay. So let's say when that goes through, we'll have about 19% not registered. Okay. And um, then what happens still, to the 19%? They'll still say they still need to get online. Okay. Let, we are just suggesting to management, uh -huh. allow everyone to get onto their system. What? My, and let's pay later. Okay, my challenge here is that yeah. being able to register as a student and being able to pay your fees to be able to register has been the standard. It's been the normalcy. Whether there was lockdown or no lockdown, you were supposed to make arrangements to pay your fees to be able to... Sure, but I mean, you agree with me, we are right. not in ordinary days. Absolutely. We are not in normal times. So you don't expect to do the normal things always, at least for once trying and compromise and make things happen for students. I totally agree. So we're not in normal times. I'm going to go.